station of Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are the West. Texas Rangers baseball is presented by AT&T Uverse TV. Now the sun has uh, broken through the morning clouds over Anaheim, California this afternoon. The Rangers taking the field for the final time on the road this year. They try to get a series win against the Los Angeles Angels. And welcome in everyone along with Tom Greaves, Steve Busby. Glad you could join us for this Sunday afternoon of Rangers baseball. And indeed, it is the final road game of 2014 Rangers looking to win it or uh, go out on a win I should say on this final day and Tom uh, Adam Rosales has been one of the guys that has really come through for this club in the last month he definitely has Buzz it's also one of those guys that you root for it's the first time in his career that he's been given the opportunity to play for an extended period of time he's getting that opportunity because he can play a number of positions recently he's been playing a lot of first base fun to watch him play an aggressive defensive first base but he's also hitting the ball 391 in his current six game hitting streak his average is almost up to 300 again he's played all four infield positions if there's one guy that's really positioned himself much better right now than you would have thought early in the season for a spot next year it's adam rosales certainly has and uh, the rangers have used every bit of what adam brings to the ballpark every day and that's his energy along with his uh, go get him attitude now the rangers are getting set to uh, come to bat for the last time on the road here this afternoon taking on the angels we'll be back with a starting lineup for the first pitch right after this Texas Rangers baseball on Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. The Ford Summer Spectacular Sales Event, now playing in a Ford dealer near you. By AT&T U-verse TV. Find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT, mobilizing your world. And by Southwest Airlines. 
without a heart. It's just a machine. And a sunny afternoon here in Southern California. Rangers and Angels for the last time this year getting set to match up and before we get started, let's head down to the field. Emily Jones is standing by him. Well, Buzz, as you well know, Nick Tepish getting a chance to grow at the big league level parts of last season. And, of course, this entire season, he's looking forward to at least two more opportunities to do just that. It's just a matter of continuing to build on what I've done, um, you know, so far and getting better each time I go out there and take the ball. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just a matter of continuing to progress and, uh, learn from my starts. And Nick says that's been one thing he really feels like he's been able to do well is make those adjustments from start to start and what he's learning to do and what he still feels like he needs to do a little bit better is to make those in-game adjustments. And I would assume uh, at the big league level that's something everyone is striving to do more consistently all the time. But Thanks, Emmy. Yeah, good points. It, uh, it's an ongoing process throughout your entire career probably for most guys. And certainly that's going to be the case uh, for Nick Tepish. No oh, a uh, sunny sky overhead, and here's the uh, lineup this afternoon for the Rangers, brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Leonis Martin leads off. He's followed by Adam Rosales playing uh, at first base again. Rugnet Odor bats third. Adrian Beltre in the cleanup spot. Right fielder is Jake Smolinski. Tomas Talis is catching this afternoon. Ryan Rua in left. The DH, J.P. Aaron Sibia. And batting ninth, the shortstop, Luis Sardinius. And we'll look at the Sonic Scouting Report for Corey Rasmus. Three and one with a nice ERA. Most of it in relief. He's had four starts. Four innings pitched in his last start. That was his longest outing. September 11th at Texas. He pitched three and a third. Pitched pretty well. Didn't walk anybody. Struck out three. He's been in the bullpen all season long. Generally when he pitches, Mike Sosha plans on having it be a bullpen day. He pitches... So far, 40, 50 pitches, and then the rest of the guys in the bullpen get their chance. So I would expect much of the same today. Maybe a few more pitches. And innings will depend on how efficient he is. And the first pitch sails high and away to Leonis Martin for ball one. Leonis, 279 with seven home runs and 39 RBI. Rangers have uh, split the first two games with these Los Angeles Angels. Rasmus. Coming in with a strike. One ball and one strike to Leonis. Martin last night an 0 for 4. One of the few times in the last couple of weeks that he's had an 0 for. He's hitting 350 over his last 14 ball games. That ball is pounded to right center field. Going back is Trout. He is at the wall, leaps up, and makes the catch. Mike Trout played out as well as you possibly can, getting to the wall and skying to pull down the shot by Martin. Now it was hit high enough that he got, he had time to get back to it. Then it was just a matter of whether he could jump high enough to catch it. Obviously, he could. Well, Leonis drove that ball as the first batter of the game, almost for an extra base hit. But Trout goes up as high as he could and makes the catch. Again, the height of that ball allowed him to get back and wait and then jump. And then it was just a matter of whether or not he could jump high enough to catch it. The one out on a sterling defensive play by Mike Trout. And Adam Rosales will come to the plate next. Rosales, a 295 average overall. Rasmus uh, misses high with the, the breaking ball. It's 1-0. Adam on this trip, 7 for 20. See the numbers for the year. Four home runs, 19 driven in, a 368 on base percentage. Also brings in a six-game hitting streak that's seen him hit just below 400. One ball and one strike. Rangers winning here on Friday night by a 12-3 count. Last night being defeated by the Angels 8-5. Although the Rangers came back and uh, made it interesting the last couple of innings. Pitch popped up. First base in foul territory. C.J. Crone right at the railing. 
front of the Ranger dugout, makes the grab. That is out number two. And Progressive would like to show you the rest of the Angels' defense here this afternoon. You saw Trout in center field, already a great defensive play. He's flanked by Navarro in left and Calhoun in right. C.J. Crone, who just took that pop-up and playing first. Ibar and Kendrick up the middle. David Freeze at third. And again, Chris Ionetta is catching here this afternoon. No oh, two gone. Base is empty. Rugnet Odor, Ranger second baseman, batting in that third spot for the second straight night. Or should say the second straight day. Takes high and outside for ball one. Odor, like Rosales, brings in a six game hitting streak. He's been a 360 batter over the, that half dozen ball games. Rasmus pulling the string, and he gets a strike. There are the numbers for Rugnet, his six game hitting streak, five RBI in those six games, and three doubles. We'll go along with that 360 average. 1 1 pitch. Now a ball and two strikes. Rangers, despite losing last night for the first time in eight ball games, uh, have scored five or more runs in six straight ball games, and that's the longest streak they've had of that kind, going back to uh, August of last year. And you look for positives, and certainly the offense uh, for Tim Bogar has responded here in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, they made that game last night an interesting ball game. Mm -hmm. Angels had a huge lead. Rangers battled back and actually had some men on. Could have made it even more interesting. Kendrick to the backhand. Throws out his counterpart. Rubnet Odor retired and so are the Rangers. One, two, three, and gone. And after a half inning here in Anaheim, it's the Rangers nothing. The Angels coming up. In the bottom of the first, Mike Socia has put this uh, lineup out there this afternoon. Cole Calhoun leads off. Mike Trout bats second. He's playing center field. Then it's the DH today, Albert Poole. Howie Kendrick in the cleanup spot. Eric Ibar follows. And then it's David Freeze, the third baseman. C.J. Crone, the start at first. He's hitting seventh. Efren Navarro again in left field. And batting ninth, the catcher, Chris Iannetta. Nick Tepish on the mound. We'll look at the Sonic scouting report. He's 5-10 and 10 in 21 games. Had one relief appearance. Last eight starts, he's pitched well. A nice 3.59 ERA. Prior to that in eight starts, he was struggling, but he's got it, got it going pretty well now in his last eight starts. Two or fewer strikeouts in 10 of his last 11 starts. Nick's really not a strikeout pitcher right now. He's more of a ground ball pitcher. Depends on location, throwing his sinker, and getting them to make less than solid contact and he's been doing a good job of that. Pitch to Cole Calhoun is high and outside 2-0. and oh. He's given up three earned runs or less in eight of his last nine starts. He's been pretty consistent as well. 
Yeah, the only problem he's had is the uh, Rangers just have not scored any runs for him. Last time they scored six. And that was the first time they had scored more than two in about 12 starts. The swing and a miss by Calhoun, two and one the count. Last start, he won at Oakland. The start you're talking about, Buzz, he got some runs that day. He only gave up one earned run in six innings through 99 pitches. Has the lowest nine-inning run support in the American League. Good pitch down and in to Calhoun. And the count evens now, two balls and two strikes. Calhoun, a 278 average for the year with 16 home runs and 57 driven in. He has been a catalyst for the Angels at the top of that order. Matter of fact, the Angels will tell you that when Calhoun scores a run, they're almost unbeatable. They're 34 and 2 since July 1st when Calhoun scores a run in a ball game. Got him swinging. I just got done saying he wasn't a strikeout pitcher. I guess that showed us. <laughs> well, maybe he is this afternoon. Well, that's one out. Mike Trout coming up. Let's take a look at the Ranger defense. It's delivered to you by break check. Outfield here this afternoon, Rua, Martin, and Smolinski, left, center, and right. Adam Rosales at first, Odor, and Sardinius up the middle. Adrian Belfry at third. Domas Dalis is catching here this afternoon. The one gone here is Trout. Mike Trout, uh, a big night last night, home run and a triple. Takes a fastball in the inside corner for strike one. Trout now 35 home runs, 109 driven in. And that 290 average with an on base percentage of almost 380. And he gets hit by that fastball. And you remember that when the Angels were at Globe Life Park, a couple of weeks ago, Trout was hit three times in that series. And he got the same look then that you're getting from Mike Socha now. Yeah, that's not something that would make Mike, Mike Socha real happy as they're trying to wind down the last week and get, get ready for the postseason to have his star hit the elbow. And again, I'll say it again about Mike Trout. He got drilled those three times in Arlington. Never looked at the pitcher, never said a word. Shook it off and went to first base, and that's what he did right there, too. I like the way he plays. And you're probably even money right now as to whether he'll try and steal second base or not. <laughs> well, he sure, not, but he's okay. Try to knock the shortstop into left field. And, <laughs> you know, who knows? Who knows? Maybe the next time he gets hit, he's going to charge the mound, but he's not going to sit there and bicker at home plate like nope. a lot of guys do. Sure isn't. Have the benches empty and go hide behind the catcher or the umpire. Do one or the other. Albert Pujols taking strike one, a 275 average, hit his 27th home run last night, drove in a couple for 100 RBI, and he takes low and outside. Saw the numbers for Pujols, he's five out of eight lifetime against Nick Tepe. One of five players in Major League history with 12 or more seasons of 100 or more RBI before he turned 35. One ball and one strike. There goes Trout, pitches outside, the throw to second is late. And Trout in with his 15th stolen base. Yeah, wasn't, wasn't a whole lot that the catcher could do on that one. Yeah, big strong guy, he must have been a good football player when he was in high school, unless he's put on some weight since high school. <laughs> With that build and that speed, yeah, man. I think he picked the right sport, though. Yeah, <laughs> probably would have done great in football too, but I don't know that he'd be making this kind of money in football. Three and one out of pool holes. Oh, Albert, uh, way ahead in the count and trying to get aboard to join Trout. Howie Kendrick will be next. Nick Tepish peering in for the sign. Trout establishing his lead at second base. And now Pujols tired of waiting, so he backs out. Now Nick with the sign that he was looking for. 
three one pitch and jammed him and pulled foul outside third. Well, you can get inside on pools as that last pitch showed you. You better have something on it and get in a pretty good spot inside. I think that if you were going to generalize, that's probably true of most good hitters, that you can get in on them. That may be the only spot that you can go to consistently, but you better get it there each time. That hole is not too large. Now Tepish with a payoff pitch. Got him out in front and a fly ball to left center field. Leonis Martin makes the catch. That is out number two. Good job by Nick Tepish. That's pretty classic. High and tight and then off speed to get him out in front. No two gone with Trout still at second. And Howie Kendrick will come up. And here's a guy that really has just roasted the Rangers this year. 293 the average over also, not just the Rangers. And Howie Kendrick has beaten up a lot of teams. 72 RBI, just three shy of his career high water mark. Got Trout at second with two outs here in the bottom of the first. Ground ball down to third. Beltre across the diamond, and that will do it. Nice job by Nick Tepish to work around the hit batter. Mike Trout stranded at second. After one in Anaheim, no score. Foundation brings the Just Keep Living programs to three high schools in North Texas, and the students involved in these programs focus on nutrition, exercise, and giving back. For more information on the Rangers Just Keep Living programs, please visit texasrangers.com slash foundation. A scoreless ball game. Rangers come to bat here in the top of the second inning. It will be the middle third of the order. Adrian Beltre. Jake Smolinski and Tomas Tales to face Corey Rasmus. Beltre coming off a three-hit, three-double game last night. Two, uh, 327 the average now. That's still third in the American League. And Rasmus first pitch way inside. Beltre jackknifing out of the way. On base percentage leaders. Jose Bautista. Victor Martinez, and then Beltre. Making a breaking ball. Evens the count at one and one. Pedro was taking a pitch there. Yep. Getting ready to see if there's going to be another pitch inside. Sure was. But normally he's not taken. Adrian trying to figure out what's going on right now. And every other pitch. Let's yeah. see. This should be a slider away. Yeah. 
Rasmus back to the plate. That's fouled out of play to the right. Two and two. Adrian, the team leader with those 18 home runs, 75 runs driven in. Mentioned that uh, RBI total kind of creeping up now as Adrian hasn't had many opportunities to drive in runs. Just gets a piece of that sharp breaking ball. Still two and two. Corey Rasmus, uh, stockily built, six foot. 200-pound right-hander out of Columbus, Georgia. He and his brother Colby. Colby, of course, the uh, outfielder for the Toronto Blue Jays. Came up in a, a baseball family. Corey's dad, uh, Tony, drafted by the Angels and played in their minor league system for three years. And the younger brother, uh, Casey, was drafted by the Cardinals. Beltre hits one high in the air down the right field line. Long run for Calhoun into foul territory, and the slide comes up short. But it stopped him from going full speed into that wall. Well, Adrian will come back and try it. Another two and two count. Corey Rasmus, again, originally drafted by the uh, Braves organization, first-round pick in 2006. Came over from the Braves to the uh, Angels in the deal that sent Scott Downs to the National League last year. Right-hander set another 2-2. A little number off the mound is Rasmus. Strong throw, and he gets Beltray by a step. Well, four up, four down for the Rangers against Rasmus, and Jake Smolinski will come up. A bit of a light crowd here on Sunday. It's a late arriving crowd. Maybe. <laughs> Strange Sunday game time, though, 1230 out yeah. here. Yeah, I don't, I don't know whose idea that was. Oakland does that too, don't they? Oakland, I don't know if they do it on Sundays or not. You know, sometimes during the week on a Wednesday or Thursday, I guess I've seen a 12.30 start. Oakland does that for sure. But I don't know. Maybe they do it on Sundays. Tough to get the beach crowd back in time for that. Yeah. 0-1, oh the count to Smolinski. Now nothing in two. Jake, a 362 hitter with a couple of home runs. Both those home runs have uh, come on this road trip. Came back off the disabled list on Tuesday night up in Oakland. It is uh, first major league home run. Rasmus ready and back to the plate with the 0-2. Jake last night had his career-high six-game hitting streak snap. Took an 0 for 4, although he did drive in a run with a ground out. And he's 7 out of 22 in the uh, five games that he has played on this trip. Another chopper foul. Rasmus in his last two starts, I think we already mentioned this, he went three and a third at Texas on the 11th, and on the 16th against Seattle, he pitched four innings. Pitched well, he only gave up one run in those two games, but he only threw 49 pitches one game and 43 pitches the next game. Actually did a pretty good job in that second game of getting through four innings with only 43 pitches. Into foul territory goes C.J. Crone, and he makes the catch as Smolinski. Get a towering foul pop. That is out number two. He's got a similar kind of game going today. He's got five outs and only thrown 22 pitches. Yeah. Well, he, a lot of strikes. Yeah, even though he's you know he's been a reliever with these starts, you would have think you would think he's built up the arm strength to throw 60 pitches maybe today. 
if that's what Mike Sosha wants. He may have it planned where he's only going to throw three or four innings because mm -hmm. he wants the rest of the guys to get some work. 14 pitchers out in the bullpen for the Angels. Yeah, you don't have to worry about running out of pitchers. No, we've seen most of them. <laughs> Trying to look and see if there's anyone we haven't seen yet. I think we've seen every one of them. Yep, all 14 of them in the last five games we've played them. 1-0 pitch to Tailies. And uh, Rasmus pulling the string a bit, gets a strike. Domas handled the DH chores last night. Last three ball games, and Domas uh, just 2 for 8 11 Rasmus back to the plate. Now 1-2. and two. Dalys had a base hit in last night's game, went one for four. He's two for eight on the road trip. Rasmus okays the sign. Now the one two. Two balls and two strikes. Domas Tales, the switch hitting catcher for the Rangers up there from the left side against the right hander Rasmus. He awaits the 2 2 pitch. And we'll try it again. Infield plays Tales uh, maybe a step around to the right. The outfield. The opposite way, maybe two or three steps around to the left. And a ground ball by the dive of Kendrick into right field. And the Rangers have their first base runner as Tomas Tales rolls a base hit through to right field. Should have had the shift on, they would have had an out. Boy, uh when we played Buzz, they played straight up for just about everybody. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, you know, you might have seen someone shading someone one way or the other, but generally when you hit a ball in the hole, you got a base hit. There was no one there to catch it. Like that. That ball's an out so many times now with a shift. <laughs> yeah. That it's just kind of routine. Yeah. It's almost like you see a hit ball hit like that, and it's a surprise when it does go through. But Talis early hasn't really established a, a style of hitting yet, but... If you have watched him, he does look like the kind of guy that might hit it anywhere. So I don't know how you could put a shift on against him. Well, he's aboard. He becomes the first base runner for the Rangers. Ryan Rua now, a 316 hitter, faces uh, Rasmus, who pours in strike one. Rua, one for four last night. And he has run his uh, hitting streak to a career high thus far, five straight. The number's 10 for 22 in those five games, a 455 average. Driven in a couple with a couple of doubles. And strike two. Ryan, along with the five game hitting streak, has had at least one hit in 10 of the last 12 games. And that had. A better than a 400 clip, 417. Down on the count here, nothing in two. Rasmus short hopping CJ Crow over there at first. With Taylor's diving back. Now Rasmus, uh, shoulder high set. One ball and two strikes. Rua this year started out in Frisco at Double A. This year he hit an even 300. That was in 71 ball games, and he went to 
Round Rock uh, the tail end of June and proceeded to hit 313 at AAA. And that pitch just a little bit low, two and two. Rasmus can get his fastball up there pretty well. Last couple have been 94, that one was 95 miles an hour. So he's got a good arm. Rua back in the box, Ionetta flashing the signs out. Rasmus says okay and sets. Got him swinging. Foul tip into the glove of Ionetta. Rasmus gets his first strikeout. The Rangers get their first hit, but strand a runner. We played the inning and a half. Rangers nothing and the Angels nothing. for a chance to have it shown on one of our upcoming broadcasts, and that's all thanks to the good folks at AT&T. Just use hashtag Southwest Fan Photo, and we might select your photo to be aired during one of our upcoming broadcasts. Eric Ibar to start off the uh, second inning for the Angels, and Nick Tepish deals low for ball one. Tepish allowed a base runner and a hit by pitch. Mike Trout got plunked on the left arm in the first inning, but uh, no damage done. Ibar, 281, slices one to left field. Ruat, in a few steps and toward the line, makes the catch. That is out number one. Next will be David Freeze. Nick Teppish out of Blue Springs, Missouri, and uh, the University of Missouri. Senior starter for the, uh, the Tigers down in Columbia. First pitch to freeze. And then a fastball sinks in at the knees. Freeze a 10 game hitting streak now. He's up to 262. 10 home runs, 55 driven in. Fouls off the next pitch. Tepish with the advantage at 0 and 2. Well, the Angels certainly hoping Freeze is getting hot at the right time for him. Started off. Very slowly this year, 150 in the first uh, month of the season. But since then, has really caught fire. And 13 RBI in his last 12 ball games. Hit hard, but right at the second baseman Odor. Two gone. So with the bases empty, C.J. Crone will come up. C.J. Crone's hit the ball pretty well against the Rangers this year. 
He had a low breaking ball the other night, about six inches off the ground, almost 395 feet to center field. Did that earlier in the year, if I remember right, that series, the first series in here that, that he was up. Really hit the low ball well. Yeah, he can hit some pitches that aren't strikes. Against the Rangers in nine games this year, hitting almost 380 with three home runs. Takes that pitch for a strike, and it's nothing and two. Well, Nick Tepish throwing a lot of strikes in this inning. 22 pitches total, and 14 of them have been for strikes. One ball, two strikes. Grown one for two in this series. Deppich into the wine. And he gets a little pop up in foul territory. That'll be just a couple of rows over the Ranger dugout. Crone has been up and down this year three different times. A big club to Triple A Salt Lake City. And despite all the moves up and down, he has 11 home runs, and that's good for sixth in the American League rookie race for round trippers. The line drive to left. Ruach coming on in a hurry and makes the catch. Just about a letter high. So a three up, three down inning for Nick Tepish and the Rangers. We're moving on to inning number three. Rangers nothing, Angels nothing. Stop action, hard pounding excitement, and historic performances. It's all there in the 2014 Major League Baseball postseason. That all starts on September the 30th. Check MLB.com for schedules. The Rangers coming to bat here in the uh, top of the third inning, a scoreless ball game. The Rangers have the only hit of the contest. That was a two out Tomas Taylor single in the second inning. It'll be J.P. Aaron Sibia, Luis Sardinas, and then Leonis Martin to face Corey Rasmus. J.P. Aaron Sibia, a local hero here after his uh, home run to vault the Rangers to victory on Wednesday night up in Oakland. That was the uh, night that the Angels had uh, defeated Seattle, and they were sitting around the ballpark watching the Rangers' A's game because a win meant they had clinched the division title. And, uh, 
apparently when JC, JP touched off that home run, it touched off a celebration here at Angel Stadium. <laughs> One ball, no strikes. And a high breaking ball for strike one. Aaron Sabia, 10 home runs, 35 runs driven in. Pulled the string and got Aaron Sabia out in front. Rasmus now 36 pitches this afternoon, and uh, 25 have been strikes. Right-hander back to the plate with a 1-2 offering. Got him swing it. Again, a changeup, and uh, Aaron Sebia goes down for the second strikeout of the afternoon by Corey Rasmus. Corey Rasmus. And with one out, Luis Sardinius will come up. Yeah, it's a bit interesting to see how Mike Sosha decides to use Rasmus as you go into next season. He looks like he's got the stuff to be a pretty good starter. He's got a good slider, good fastball. That was a pretty good changeup. Mm -hmm. so he's got the pitches to be a starter. Just depends on what the opportunity is for him in that role. And Hector Santiago has not really established himself as a frontline starter yet. Strike one to Sardinius. Luis, 260 overall. Eight runs driven in. And a little pop fly, shallow left, backpedaling, eye bar fighting the sun. And even with the glasses down, almost lost it in the glare. That is out number two. Now Santiago's averaging about five innings per start. Pitching decently in those five innings when he's in there. You look at one thing that you might be a little bit concerned about for the postseason with the Angels would be their starting pitching. Yeah. It was interesting to see what Jared Weaver said in the paper. You know, we were talking last night, Buzz, that that's as well as we've seen him throw. The velocity on his fastball was several miles an hour better than it's been the last couple of years. Uh huh. And he said that in the paper today. He said, that's the best I've felt in the last three years. I think I've gotten over the hump as far as the mild shoulder problems that he's had talked about his pitching mechanics and right now it's as healthy as he's been and as well as as he feels he's throwing and it sure looked like that last night yeah it sure did I, I agree with you and, and not just velocity I mean he had good uh, late movement on that breaking ball it wasn't a roller that we've seen before it had some some pop to it late and that uh, that usually tells you the guy's arm is as healthy as it's going to get Numbers four in last night, five innings of, or I should say five hits and seven innings of work. And two of those three runs scored after he had departed the game. He left with a couple of runners aboard, and they both scored. Now Matt Shoemaker has been a terrific pitcher. He's 16 and four, but he's got a little bit of an injury right now as you look for the postseason as well. Kendrick sidearm to first, and the Rangers again go quietly. In one, two, three fashion, we've played two and a half. Rangers nothing, Angels nothing on Fox Sports Southwest.
Texas Rangers baseball on Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Without a heart, it's just a machine. And by the all-new Mazda 3 with seamless connectivity. Now the waterfall in the uh, Rock Garden out in deepest center field here at Angel Stadium. Scoreless ball game. Pretty much dominated by pitching here through the first two and a half. And uh, Angels come to bat at the bottom of the third. Efren Navarro, Chris Iannetta, and Cole Calhoun. Who face Nick Tepe. One ball, no strikes. Navarro, second straight start out in left field for the Angels in this series. 252 average for the home run and 14 driven in. Three hopper out to Rugnet Odor. One gone. Now before Chris Iannetta comes up, let's take time for a Mazda game break with Dana Larson. Dana. All right, Dana, thank you. Well, it seems like everything out of New York, the press, is, whether it be printed or radio TV, is the last for Derek Jeter. Last home game, last home weekend game, last uh, last time he tipped his cap. I can't wait to see the last at bat that he has at Yankee Stadium. How long that ovation yeah. will be. That's coming up Thursday, I think. That'll be a big one. Sure will. Chris Iannetta struggling a bit on this homestand for the Angels. Just one for eight eleven. And overall a 252 average. He shoots one foul down the right side, back into the seats. Two balls and a strike. Nick Tepish working with one out and the base is empty here in the third inning. Good fastball threw it right on by Ionetta. Two and two. Nick has pitched four times against the Angels. Three times against him this year. He's never given up more than three earned runs in a start. He's got his first strikeout as Ionetta, or second strikeout, excuse me, as Ionetta goes down swinging. Now back to the top of the order for Cole Calhoun. To a high inside fastball by Ionetta. No two gone, and that is uh, seven straight retired by Nick Tepic. Cole Calhoun began things by striking out against the Ranger right-hander. Starting the second time through the order. Tepish drops in a curveball that's a little bit low for ball one. Calhoun at 277 average. He faces Tepish here in the third. One ball, one strike. Calhoun now 0 for his last nine trips to the plate. Yeah, one of those angels that uh, has done it to the Rangers this year. He has four home runs and 12 RBI against Texas pitching this year. Ten of his 16 hits have gone for extra bases. Out of play to the left. Tepich again. Up in the count at one and two. That figure we told you about his first time up. Angels 34 and 2 since uh, the 1st of July when Calhoun scores a run. Nick Tepe's trying the back door, but just missed outside. Two balls, two strikes. Nick and a very economical afternoon. 36 pitches. 
as he deals to Calhoun. Chopper foul outside first. We'll reset, try it again. Mike Sosha would tell you that Cole Calhoun has really uh, been the one missing ingredient the Angels uh, offense suffered through last year. And that be the leadoff man, a productive leadoff man. Calhoun has done that, provided some power at that leadoff spot. Good on-base percentage, and he has filled the bill. Got him swinging here. Good fastball from Tepish, who records his third strikeout of the afternoon. Second time, he has gotten Calhoun. We have played three in Anaheim. Still no score. up this Thursday night, that's September 25th, Rangers hosting the A's and the first 15,000 fans, 14 and older, get a U Darvish jersey courtesy of Dr. Pepper and Albertsons. Get your tickets now for the last giveaway night of the season at TexasRangers.com. Top of the fourth inning, Adam Rosales, the number two man in the order. Starting things off, it'll be Rosales, Odor, and Beltre to face Corey Rasmus. Rasmus has allowed just one base hit, and that was the only base runner. Tomas Tales singled in the second. Rosales showing bunt. That had David Fries charging down the line from third. It is strike one. Rosales popped out in foul territory to C.J. Crone, the first baseman, back in the first inning. Six-game hitting streak at 391 for Rosales. A ball and a strike. And Corey Rasmus getting close to that uh, pitch total that Tom told you about. Uh, pretty much his limit the last several times out, 45, maybe 50 pitches. Well, at the end of that foul. Warm up activity in their bullpen, so it's probably going to be 50 55 pitches or four innings right around in there. Mike Morin out there warming up. Change up guy. Rosales back in the batter's box. One ball, two strikes to count to it. Didn't want to do it on a good breaking ball from Rasmus. And Rosales is gone. That is the third strikeout for Rasmus. One gone for Rugnet Odor. 
Again, Rasmus, Rasmus has a good assortment of pitches. He throws a curveball, slider, changeup, and a fastball. That's a pretty good curveball down and away. Came into the game with a 206 opponent's batting average. He's only given up one hit so far today. He'll now face Rugnet Odor with the bases empty and one away. Odor grounded out to his counterpart, uh, Howie Kendrick, at second. Rugnet now at uh, 260 with the batting average. First pitch to him. He is on the inside corner for strike one. Odor, like a couple of other Ranger teammates of his, a six-game hitting streak. Rook dead 364 for this road trip. Off the end of the bat, out towards short, and I bar a quick release. Two gone. You know, Rasmus continuing to change speeds and not have a whole lot of good swings from Ranger hitters. Well, Base is empty, two away, Adrian Beltre, who uh, did a little tapper out in front of the, in front of the plate his first time up. Mentioned that his last start was against Seattle, four innings, one hit, no runs, no walks, four strikeouts, and it's gonna be almost the exact same thing today. Four innings, one hit, no runs, no walks. He's got three strikeouts now. It may be five hits as Trout is going back. He is at the wall and makes the catch. Beltre comes up about five feet short of giving the Rangers the lead. It's just a long out. The result, the Rangers down in order, and after three and a half, we are still scoreless at Angel Stadium. kids every Saturday morning it's on at 10 o'clock right here on Fox Sports Southwest where it's not about the score it's about the experience a sun bathed crowd out here this afternoon at uh, Angel Stadium sportless ball game very good pitchers duel here this afternoon just one hit total by the two teams in three and a half innings Nick Tepish will face Mike Trout, Albert Pujols, and Howie Kendrick for the second time. Trout hit by a pitch his first time up. And, uh, Nick Tepish staying right in there and misses inside for ball one. Trout second in the major leagues with those 109 RBI. Good breaking ball from Tepish. Well, Nick has it going today. He's uh, got good command of fastball and the breaking ball throwing a couple of changeups a couple of curveballs Tom told you about the success that Nick has had against the Angels no more than three runs in uh, any of his outings two and one out of trout 
Brian handed, handed us a good stat for second place hitters. The all time record for RBIs for a second place hitter is Eddie Matthews and Alex Rodriguez. They knocked in 114 runs batting second. And there is the first angel hit of the afternoon as Trout bangs one in the center, a leadoff base hit here in the fourth. Trout has the sixth most with 107. And about another week to go to try to catch Eddie Matthews. Folks, this October, history will be made in baseball's postseason. Moves to America's new sports network. Fox Sports 1 is your new home for baseball's National League Division and Championship Series. It all begins this October. Rangers have a couple of guys not in the top 10, but in the top 25 batting second, knocking in runs. 15th best all-time is Michael Young back in 2010. He knocked in 91 runs. And then the 23rd best of all time happened in 2004. Hank Blaylock knocked in 85 runs batting second. Trout actually has 109 RBIs, but two of them came batting third. Somehow I don't see him batting second for the rest of his career. <laughs> I think he'll be moving into that third slot in the lineup probably. Some of the, the new age metrics uh, trying to convince people that second is the, the best second spot is best. for him. Yeah. Well, maybe he will then. I don't know. Trout on the move and the pitch fouled back right below us. And Trout, who stole a base his first time on, uh, had second stolen that time too, but two holes fouled back to pitch. Second is the new third? Uh, apparently, yeah. yeah. You know, interesting on the, the numbers you were just talking about, you don't see many National Leaguers on there. Eddie Matthews, and that's with a pitcher hitting ninth that Matthews was able to yeah. drive in all those runs. Probably hit about 50 home runs that year. 0-2 pitch. Down the left field line, but it's hooking. And goes foul off the sidewalk. And it probably didn't hurt him having... Uh, Hank Aaron and Joe Edcock behind him. <laughs> Pools, fly ball to center back in the first. Nick Tepish got him off balance then. And, uh, ahead of the count here, no balls and two strikes. Trout at first, nobody out. I guess the other thing about Trout batting second is if you've got Albert Pujols healthy and effective batting third, and the same with Josh Hamilton batting fourth, he's not a bad guy to have hitting yeah. in front of those guys. Yeah. He scored 100 runs his first three years in the major leagues. A handful of guys have done that before the age of 23. Double play ground ball turned by a door picked by Rosales. I guess it was picked. That wow. wasn't that wasn't an easy pick either. He had bounced that ball way in front of him. And he couldn't just reach out and slap at it. He had to he had to catch that ball. That was not an easy play for Adam. But we've seen him making a lot of plays that haven't been easy plays last week or so that he's been over there. He's got Trout down there in a hurry get at second base. Yeah. 205 pounds or whatever sliding into him. He was trying to get rid of that as quickly <laughs> as he could to keep him getting pounded into left field. Well, the Rangers now, that's their 144th double play. You see Trout already into his slide before Odor got the ball. <laughs> Odor, Odor was out of the way, but he was out of the way all, all the way over to shortstop when he got rid of that ball and wasn't able to make an accurate throw. He knew Trout would be coming after him, and he wasn't sticking around to find out. Well, the double play erases the leadoff Trout single, and now Kendrick up there with the bases empty and two away. One hopper smashed it to Elvis Andrews. Or, excuse me, Sardinius. And that is going to do it. So, uh, Nicely turned double play and then a hard hit ball for an out. The Angels are gone. We finished four. No score.
fifth inning here at the Big A in Anaheim, and it has been an interesting season to say the least, highlighted by the performance of a number of young players, Jake Smolinski being one of those said players, and here's what he had to say about the biggest differences from the minors to the majors. I think the preparation daily is a big difference as far as uh, just getting ready to play the game. And uh, the atmosphere, obviously, playing in the stadiums is a little bit different also. But uh, for the most part, uh, I mean, it's still the same game, but just everything's kind of elevated. Also, the media inquiries that these guys have to deal with, doing interviews on a regular basis, something that guys like Jake and uh, Ryan Rua, Rugi, have had to, to learn to do. And I think that they're, they're getting there, guys. It's tough. It's, it's not easy to do this on a daily basis and know how to talk to cameras and writers and all those different things, but that's definitely part of learning as well. All right, Em, thank you. Well, here is the uh, foreign mentioned and featured Jake Smolinski to start things off and he chops that first pitch from Corey Erasmus foul it is nothing in one Erasmus uh, really doing a good job of getting ahead of uh, Ranger hitters he has not had a three ball count this afternoon as a matter of fact Brian Hagen our great statistician tells us that uh, he's only had three two ball counts three strikeouts no walks obviously 0-1, the count to Smolinski. Check swing, no swing. Peel down to first. And Jim Wolf, the uh, no swing sign. Smolinski fouled out his first time up. Numbers 5, 6, and 7 in the Ranger order to be the first three here in the fifth. Smolinski, Thales, and Arua. Ball's hit pretty well to right center field. Trout on the run into the alley, and he can't get it. It's off the wall. Backed up by Calhoun, but into second with a leadoff double is Jake Smolinski. And he gave it a pretty good ride to the opposite alley. The Raiders finally got one to find a hole out there. They've hit a couple of balls hard. Martin hit one to lead off the game. That Trout jumped as high as he could to catch. Beltre drove one right to the wall last inning. And this one eludes the outfielders and goes for a double, a leadoff double. The Rangers trying to get on the board first here in the fifth inning. The Rangers have their second base runner. First time they've had a runner in scoring position. Smolinski hitting that ball exactly between Calhoun and uh, Mike Trout. Here's Tales who takes high and tight for ball one. But Tomas who was able to pull the ball the first time he faced Rasmus, pulled it into the hole for a base hit. He would take a, a similar ground ball here to at least get Smolinski over to third. Rasmus a check of second. Two balls, no strikes. Dailies, pretty good opportunities uh, with runners in scoring position, 18 of them, and he has been successful a third of the time with runners in scoring position. Two and all the count. The changeup floats over. Rasmus. 55 pitches thus far. And this will be the most that he has thrown in any of his appearances. Fifth start of the year for him. Angels have been scrambling. Uh, Garrett Richards went down with the injury, and of course Shoemaker also down. Uh, but he is expected back at some point in time. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what they do in the postseason. If Shoemaker doesn't come back, they're really going to be thin. It's tough to count on Santiago. His last two starts, he hasn't even gone three innings in yeah. either one of them. Walked five and one, got bombed the other night by the Rangers. Richards on the DL, Tyler Skaggs on the DL. Who knows? Maybe Rasmus is getting a little bit of an audition. He'll have another start before the postseason. 
Lane outside, three and two now to Tailies. But he's not really even close to being stretched out to start a playoff no. game. No. Uh -uh. And you can't take 14 guys in the bullpen to a playoff. No, you can't. <laughs> That's what the Angels have right now. Right now, if, if Shoemaker's a question mark, you've got Weaver and C.J. Wilson. C.J. Wilson is hardly someone you can count on going seven innings in the postseason. He'll throw 110 pitches in five innings, too. And they're going to be counting on their bullpen. First full count of the afternoon. And Taylor spoils the pitch from Rasmus. Rasmus pondering the next pitch to Taylor's. Smolinski at second after the leadoff double. Rangers trying to get on the board in the run column. Scoreless game after four and Rangers with that leadoff two bagger. Trying to bring Smolinski around. Another 3 2 pitch is coming. Inside and low, ball four. And that walk may be the last. That we will see of uh, Corey Rasmus here this afternoon as Mike Sosha is making his way out to the mound and he has already signaled to the bullpen. He wants uh, some relief help to come in. So Rasmus leaves with runners at first and second. Nobody out here in the fifth inning, a scoreless ball game. We'll take time out for this pitching change at Angel, Angel Stadium. We are back after this on Fox Sports Southwest. season as well. Like all the relievers are having good seasons. Moran's got a 219 opponent's batting average. Got a pretty good fastball. Really good changeup. Only giving up three home runs in 56 innings. Kind of right now it's his game to win but not his to lose depending on what happens this inning. Yeah. He can get out of this inning and pitch pretty well. The Angels score some runs while he's in there. He's got a chance to get a win. Warren, a big guy. He's 6'4", goes about 220 pounds. Out of uh, North Carolina, University of North Carolina. Grew up in the uh, Kansas City area. Uh, he's on here. Runners at first and second. Nobody out. Ryan Rua, the number seven man of the Ranger order up there. It'll be interesting to see now if uh, he is asked to bunt. Angels don't think he will be. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think so, but let's find out. Morin a check of second, no bunt for Rule, and he pops up the first pitch. That'll be an infield fly rule out as uh, Freeze takes care of it. That's one of those at bats against a guy you haven't seen very much. First pitch hitting. If you late, you 
narrow it down to a good pitch to hit. That ball looked like it ran in on his fists. Mm -hmm. A little bit late swinging at it, got tied up and jammed. Might have been a little over anxious to do something right there in a nothing to nothing game. A couple of men on. You know, that pitch is down, maybe out over the plate a little bit. You can get the good part of the bat on it. Yep. Good pitch to hit, but when you run in on your fists, that's not a real good pitch to hit. First pitch you've seen from a hit from a pitcher. Hey, Pierre and Sibia swinging a miss at the off-speed pit from Morin. Aaron Sibia struck out uh, in his only at bat this afternoon. That was against Corey Rasmus. JP with runners in scoring position, hitting about 50 points higher than uh, his overall average. Plays off that breaking ball. One and one. Mike Moore in the Angels minor league pitcher of the year in 2013. And earned him some uh, pitching time here at the big leagues this year. High fly ball into foul territory way down the line. Over to take a look is Navarro, but it's back yeah, about six rows. Ionetta out to uh, say something to Morin, like uh, do not throw the ball down there on the inside part of the plate there in Sebia. One and two now. Spolinski at second, Talese at first. A double followed by a walk. Sebia had that off-speed pitch up to work with and fouled it back to the screen. Still one and two. Mike Morin, originally a 13th round pick by the Angels in the uh, 2012 draft out of North Carolina. Got him swinging. After all the off-speed stuff, came back with a pretty good fastball to get the strikeout. Two gone. And pretty good job so far. First and second, nobody out. Yeah, pop up and a strikeout. That's kind of the way it's diagrammed uh, in the how to pitch manual. Luis Sardinas, a pop out his first time. Luis, a 257 average. Morin comes to the plate. And Sardinas fouls off that first pitch. Trying to increase that RBI total here. It stands at eight. Morin, a belt high set, the 0-1 pitch. Pulled out to Kendrick, and Morin comes in, does a great job of getting three outs and stranding runners at first and second. Halfway through the ball game this afternoon, Rangers nothing, Angels nothing on Fox Sports Southwest.
to catch a post-game fireworks show. That's the 26th of September, and the fireworks show will be following the game with the A's. Fans will be treated to a spectacular fireworks show thanks to our friends at the Big Green Egg. $15 tickets in the upper reserve section are available at texasrangers.com slash specials, and you can use the online coupon code FIREWORKS. You know, Nick Tepish back to the hill. Rangers uh, kind of wasted a pretty good opportunity to score in the top of the fifth. Lead off double and a walk and stranded both runners. Mike Morin quieted that rally down in a hurry. He did. He did that. You know, Eric Ibar leading off. 1-0 pitch to him. Up the middle into center field, a base hit. Nick Tepish disappointed that he didn't get a glove on that ball. <laughs> Scootered by him pretty quickly. Over the second straight inning, the Angels get a leadoff hit. And before David Freeze steps in, let's take time for a Mazda game break. Once again, here's Dana Larson. All right, Dana, thank you. Boy, that really a must-win game for... Kansas City after losing the first two to the Tigers. Entered the day tra- trailing by five and a half. Here's our American League Central look. It's as of right now, the Royals two and a half back of the Tigers. And uh, of course, the wild card it, uh, has become a three team race. Royals with uh, Seattle and Oakland all within a half game of each other. One on, one out here in the fifth inning. Scoreless ball game, and David Freeze, who rounded to second his first time up, will face Nick Tepich again. Freeze, a 262 average. Ibar bears some watching over first, and Tepich is doing exactly that. Ibar this year, 15 stolen bases, but been caught nine times. Look at David Freeze, the first Angels third baseman with 10 home runs, 50 runs, and 50 RBI. Troy Gloss. Low and in. And the count moves to 2 0. Rangers shade their center fielder, Leonis Martin, toward right center just a bit. Ranger fans will remember that uh, Freeze, certainly the ability to drive the ball the other way. The folks, Southwest Airlines is celebrating the arrival of 15 new nonstop destinations out of Dallas Love Field. Go to uh, southwest.com slash rangerslove to enter to win round trip tickets. Two and one, as Tepish sets. High ball to right. In and toward the line, Jake Spolinski drifts into foul territory after he made the catch. Tagging it first, moving to second is Ibar, and he is in safely. Well, a heads-up base running play by Eric Ibar. On a fairly shallow foul flyer near the foul line. Eric Ibar tags and... Uh, Take second before Smolinski can get the ball back in. Well, he knew Smolinski as a right-handed thrower was going toward the line. So he knew he would have to turn and throw. And then I think he was depending on the element of surprise. With Smolinski that shallow, not thinking he would go, maybe not getting off a quick, accurate throw. That's pretty much exactly what happened. It, I don't think he would say you caught him sleeping, but right. I think he was probably a little bit surprised that he went. And it just shows from an out from an outfield position, you still have to make an accurate throw to throw someone out. And that's a pretty good gamble right there. Knowing the right-handed thrower would have to turn his body all the way around to throw it to second base. Got himself into scoring position on it. Second time today that the uh, Angels have had a runner in scoring position. Trout was at second back in the first. And a fly ball off the bat of C.J. Crone. Backing out, Luis Sardinius makes the grab. 
And that is out number two, and we'll, we'll be Ephraim Navarro next. Number 19, Ephraim. A good pitch by Nick Teppich to get the pop out. Now the left-handed hitting Navarro coming up 0 for 1. Rounded out to second base as he let off the third. Hits are even at two apiece for the Angels and Rangers. Scoreless ball game. Bottom of inning number five. Angels, one of the better home records this year. They are 52 and 28. Here at uh, Angel Stadium. They will finish up their uh, home season today and uh, head out on the road for their last six ball games. Navarro in his last seven games, uh, just a 220 average, or 200 average, excuse me. And the breaking ball catches the outside corner. One and one. Tepish just 60 pitches here this afternoon to work through four and two-thirds innings. 37 strikes and 23 balls. A check of second. And Navarro fouls off that pitch. One and two now. Tepish and Tegley's having a little conference with what they want to do now that they're ahead of Navarro. Nick back up on top. Navarro settling into the batter's box. Breaking ball looped down the left field line, but that is going to slice and go just over the tarpaulin. And we will try it again at one and two. Navarro, one of uh, a couple of guys that Mike Sosha has been trying in left field with the absence of Josh Hamilton. Sosha not only missing his bat in the lineup, but also defensively. And Navarro, we've seen Sean O'Malley out there in this series. High fly ball pulled down the right field line, but that's well back and out of play. Still a ball and two strikes. Besides those two, the Angels really don't have a lot of options. I guess Brennan Bosch, who, when he was with the uh, Tigers, played some outfield. But well, the one guy we haven't seen that we saw in Texas all the games was Colin Cowgill. Cowgill, that's right. I don't know if he's injured or anything, but he was playing, if I remember right, he played all the games when the Angels were in Texas. We haven't seen him in any of the games here. Ibar going to third, and the pitch is fouled away. Well, they'll let him have third, Adrian yeah. Budge. You know, with that, with Navarro looking like an opposite field hitter in this at bat, if the third baseman covers and he shoots a ground ball to third base, it drives in a run. So Adrian stood his ground, and with two outs, they were willing to give up that base. Still one and two. Navarro's become uh, kind of a pain in the hindsight. Nick Tepish stepping back off the pitching rubber, so let's recycle those. And now he wants to talk to Tegles. Tim Bogar, as we mentioned, has uh, seen his ball club come alive offensively in the last uh, couple of weeks. Not so much here today. 0-2 oh, pitch. Hot shot to short. Sardinius on across the diamond, and that'll do it. 
You know, Eric Ibar gets a single, but is stranded at second base. And we'll go to the sixth inning here in Anaheim. Rangers nothing, Angels nothing. It's time now for the Sonic Slam Inning, brought to you by Sonic. Today's jackpot is worth $1,300 and dinner for two at Sonic Drive-In. Today, the Rangers are hitting for Barbara White from Fort Worth. And if a Ranger hits a grand slam this inning, Barbara White from Fort Worth will win $25,000. You can register at any participating Sonic restaurant. Now we go to the uh, top of the sixth inning. Our new pitcher on the hill for the Angels, Fernando Salas, right-hander, coming on in out of the bullpen. Yeah, Salas, 5-0 and oh for the season. Giving up some home runs, five home runs in 55 innings, but a good opponent's batting average. Good, solid setup guy for the Angels. And what a job for Mike Moore. He came in with men on first and second, nobody out. Just didn't give the Rangers anything. A little blooper, a strikeout, and a dribbler. Uh, still a scoreless ball game, and uh, Salas now will face the top of the Ranger order. Leonis Martin, Adam Rosales, and Rugnet Odor. Again, Martin uh, showing bunt and pulls the bat back for ball one. Leonis had uh, extra bases taken away from him by Mike Trout as he started the game by driving one to deep center field. Trout went up against the padding to pull it down. And the pitch from Salas outside. Two balls, no strikes. Last time up, Martin grounded to second. Salas, next pitch. And he fires a strike. Fernando Salas, a longtime uh, member of the St. Louis Cardinals bullpen. Did a lot of good work in St. Louis. Base hit to right field. Well, Leonis hit that thing right on the nose. And there is a leadoff single, the second straight inning now. The Rangers have had their leadoff man aboard. He's hit a couple of balls well today. Almost had a double off the wall, maybe a home run his first time up. Went out and ripped that ball over second. Well, we'll see what happens now. What Tim Bogart decides to do with uh, Adam Rosales up there hitting in the number two slot. And you have Leonis Martin, who's the team leader in stolen bases this year. Rosales, 0 for 2 today, a foul pop and a strikeout. And, uh, Martin immediately drawing some. Uh, Scrutiny from Fernando Salas. Martin, 29 stolen bases in 40 attempts. Oh, 
Salas set. And fires strike one. Rosales checking with Gary Pettis down at third to see what uh, what might be on here with one on, nobody out. Martin stepping off that lead at first base as Salas reads the signs. There's a drive into center field. That's down for a base hit. Martin stopping at second. You see, he had to make sure that that ball was going to fall and he didn't get a great jump, but... Uh, uh, first two men aboard here for the Rangers in the sixth inning against Fernando Salas. And it will bring up Rugnet Odor. Yeah, a couple of good swings there by Martin and Rosales. Both of them have been making a lot of good swings. Let's take a second here to look at our Coors Light cold hard fact for you. Rugnet Odor, one of uh, four players in Rangers history with six or more doubles triples and home runs in their rookie season. The other three, Ruben Sierra, Elvis Andrews, and Bump Wills. That's pretty good company as far as Rangers are concerned. There's a snap throw to second, but Martin back ahead of the throw from Ionetta. <laughs> High bar fake like he was going to throw it to the pitcher and turn around and try to t try to <laughs> see if Martin would get off the bag. Try to pull the little league hidden ball trick on him. Martin got up and tossed some dirt at him. <laughs> they fortunately it didn't work. I think work, they're friends. They? And it was, yeah. They yeah. might not have been friends anymore if Martin was <laughs> off the base when he turned around and tagged him, though. Odor, who was showing Bunt his first time, again around a Bunt and gets it down. It's a good one. Salas to first with Kendrick covering, and he just he sprawls all over the bag in an effort to get the foot back on it. Benji says, Benji says safe. He's calling out uh, Tim to see. Tim Bogart going to go out there and uh, talk to Jim Wolf, the first base umpire. Benji's telling Kendrick, you didn't touch the bag. And let's take a look and see if he did. I don't know. Maybe his leg was leaning up against it. Apparently, Joy Probinski was upstairs <laughs> looking Except at Except Benji didn't see it very well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, got that left foot back in there and slapped at it. And, and Jim Wolf's going to come over and tell Benji, that's why you shouldn't be an umpire anytime <laughs> soon, Benji. <laughs> I can't coach I can't coach first or coach catchers, but it doesn't look like you can umpire either. <laughs> that sacrifice goes one forward. It sets up a, an intentional walk for Adrian Beltre. And that is going to load the bases now and bring up Jake Smolinski. As soon as uh, they finish with the wide ones to Adrian. It's one of these situations we were talking about where Beltre just does not get an opportunity late in this year to uh, drive in any runs. Close ball game. Teams are just not going to pitch to him. No. No, the intentional pass loads him up. Smolinski doubled his last time up. That was uh, against the starter, Corey Rasmus. Our AT&T U-verse Rewind. Take you uh, back to Friday night. And Jake Smolinski, a towering two-run home run. His second big league round tripper. That was part of that 12-run uh, Ranger outburst against the Angels here on Friday night. Yeah, I think what Tim Bogar would be saying right here is he knows that Beltre is going to get walked, but I think he's showing confidence in Jake Smolinski uh -huh. that with the bases loaded and one out, he could deliver right here. He's been swinging the bat well. Otherwise, I don't think Tim would have sacrificed right. if he didn't feel like Smolinski was a guy he wanted to see up there in this situation. Tie game, bases loaded. 367, the average for Smolinski with a couple of home runs, 11 driven in. Takes a fastball from Salas. It's in for strike one. Molinsky trying to put the Rangers on top here in this scoreless ball game. Runners in scoring position this year. Jake at four for 15 with six RBI. He's got the bases full of Ranger teammates. Martin at third, Rosales at second, and Beltre at first. 
the looper foul as Salas jammed him. And now Salas the advantage in the counter to 0 2. Walensky joined the Ranger organization as a minor league free agent last November. And uh, getting a good opportunity ever since the middle of the season at the big league level. Sidetracked by that broken left foot. Foul to pitch off of the end of July. Nothing and two as Salas sets. Now one and two. Angels a double play depth up the middle with Ibar shaded slightly toward the hole. And Kendrick a couple of steps nearer the bag. Outfield just about straight away. And a good swing on that fastball. And Jake fouled it off. Still a ball and two strikes. Rangers can't try to capitalize here in the sixth inning. And since it is our Sonic slam inning, Barbara White from uh, Fort Worth is hoping for another Smolinski home run. $25,000. Salas with a 1-2. Couldn't get Smolinski to offer. Two balls, two strikes. Sunshine here this afternoon. A very light breeze drifting out toward left field. 2 2 pitch to Smolinski, and it's chopped foul. We'll try it again. As Ranger fans have noted, that uh, good short, quick stroke that Smolinski has has served him very well and served the Rangers very well in a lot of spots. Back in the batter's box, Molinsky wagging that bat back and forth as Salas reads the signs. Got him swinging. Salas went upstairs with a little extra heat and gets a huge strikeout. A two gone, Tomas Dalys will come up. Heavy pitch tracker showing you that right up the very top of the strike zone. Jake not able to get on top of it. Taylor's been aboard both times that he has come to the plate this afternoon. Walked his last time up. Singled back in the second inning. Getting out of that extreme open stance in the first pitch inside to him for ball one. Dalys, a 254 average. Salas back to the plate. Pulled the string a little bit, and uh, Dalys waved at it for strike one. Left-handers this year have only hit 168 against Fernando Salas. That's as opposed to uh, 277 for right-handers. One and two. They got a pretty good combination going to the last two hitters. Fastball, changeup, fastball, changeup. Dallas okays the sign, the 1 2 pitch. We'll try it again. Rangers have four hits. Two of them have come in this inning. Leadoff single by Leonis Martin, and followed by an Adam Rosales single. 
Sacrifice bunt and an intentional walk to load the bases. Taylor's trying to cash him in. Two and two. Remember Taylor's in the first action he saw in the Seattle series back a few weeks ago had that bases clearing double in a similar situation. Off the fist, out toward Ibar, it's off his chest. It's gonna be everybody safe in to score, Leonis Martin, and Tailies will get credit for an infield single. The Rangers take a one nothing lead. That took a nasty hop on Ibar. Ibar is very steady at shortstop. He's a terrific shortstop. He didn't have a chance on that one though. That had some spin on it. Had his glove down, really even no, no way you can gauge how this slicing ball is going to bounce. And even if he did know, I don't know if he could have caught it anyway. Just bounced up and hit him in the chest. Kept it in front of him anyway. Kept it from being two runs instead of one. So an RBI infield single from Tomas Tales. Rangers on top. Now here's Ryan Rua. And he takes strike one. Rua 0 for 2. A strikeout and a pop out. Base is still loaded. One and one. Oh, they can hit throw a lot of pitches. 27 pitches. And the Rangers with three singles, an intentional walk in the inning. They're looking for more than just one. They've got one across, but they also have the bases loaded. Looking for uh, Ryan Rua to cash in more here. Good swing at that fastball out away from him. And the count is one and two. And Chevy pitch tracker showing that fastball up in the strike zone and Ryan fouling it back. Little looper right back to Salas. <laughs> I've seen that one this year. He just reaches up and uh, hauls it in. That'll do it, but the Rangers take the lead. They get a run on three hits and leave them loaded after five and a half. It's the Rangers one and the Angels nothing. Texas Rangers baseball on Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by your Texas Ford dealers. The Ford Summer Spectacular sales event. Now playing at a Ford dealer near you. The Rangers draw first blood in the ball game here this afternoon. The rubber game of this three game series. One nothing as uh, 
Nick Tepish heads back to the mound. He will face Chris Iannetta to start things off for the Angels and back to the top of the order. First pitch is pop foul back over our heads and out of play. It is nothing and one to Iannetta, who struck out the first time that he faced Tepish. Nick has allowed just three base runners this afternoon. Two singles and a hit batter. Good sharp slider. Nothing in two to Iannetta. This might be the best combination of uh, fastball slider we've seen Nick Tepish feature. Yeah, he's, he's had really good stuff today. Good life on his fastball. Good command, too. A lot of strikes. Yep. Pretty decent pitch count. 68 at the moment. Working to the first hitter here in the sixth inning. And Nick working pretty quickly. A 1 2 pitch. In the left center field, that's a base hit. And Nick is reaching out and poking it over Sardinia's head for a leadoff single. Third straight inning now. The Angels have had the leadoff man aboard via a base hit. Now it takes him back to the top of the order for Cole Calhoun. Well, Calhoun this afternoon has had no luck at all against Tepe. He has struck out both times that he's faced the Ranger right-hander. Beltre coming down the line from third just in case. Hit and run is on, and a chopper hit to the right side. <laughs> Tepish gets the feed from Rosales in plenty of time <laughs> to get Calhoun at first. Yeah, that was a tricky little play. Once, once Adam caught the ball, he had to figure out how to get it back, like right over his head, back to Tepish covering first base. Had plenty of time to do it, though, so it wasn't that big a problem. Yeah, good job by... Both of them, as a matter of fact, you get that throw there early enough, and even if the throw's not perfect, Tepish had time to catch the ball and then worry about where first base was. You know, it works like a sacrifice for the Angels. The only you know, difference is Cole Calhoun get charged with it in bat. But Ionetta now at second in scoring position for Mike Trout. One ball, no strikes. Trout one for one today. Hit by a pitch his first time up there. Single to lead off the fourth. Rangers lead one nothing. And uh, Tepish with his hands full now. The tying run at second. And you've got Trout to be followed by Pujols. RBI. Mike Trout leading the American League 109. He is two behind the major league leader, Adrian Gonzalez. Two balls, no strikes. Trout's average at 291 currently. And they're going to intentionally walk. Mike Trout, now that they've fallen behind 2-0. It'll bring up Albert Pujols, and uh, you can probably count on one hand the number of times that you walk somebody to get to Pujols. But once you fall behind Mike Trout with the tying run at second base, it probably doesn't leave you much of an option. No, and if you have your choice who you want to pitch to, I'm going to pitch to Pujols and not Trout. Trout's a better hitter right now. Go back four or five years, he sure wouldn't do it. But you got a chance now if you get him to hit a double, a ground ball, of getting a double play to get out of the inning. And, you know, like you say, though, it's it's no day at the beach pitching the pool holds, but. Well, Tepish got the ground ball double play last time Pujols was up. Turned to 6 4 3 on him and uh, looking for the same thing to happen here. Two on, one out. Pujols, along with that double play grounder, is flied out. The 0 for 2 this afternoon. Now time called. Albert not quite ready. Adam Homari, the home plate umpire. Telling uh, 
Pepish. Hang on here a second. Now we're ready. And a breaking ball. Cuts the strike zone in half. It's nothing in one. Ryan Etta at second, Trout at first. Excuse me, Tom. I was just going to say, Trout is a 3-10 hitter with men in scoring position. Base hit hope. to left field. Ryan Etta being waved around third. Rua's throw is not in time. Sliding in with a tying run, Chris Ryan Etta. Albert Pujols with the RBI. It is a 1-1 ball game. I was going to say, Pujols is a 250 hitter with men in scoring position. Whatever he was, it's a few points higher now after that base hit. Just past shortstop. A little bit to the right. In a pretty good shape. Well, Mike Maddox out to the mound to talk to Nick Tepish. And not a bad pitch at all. It jammed Pujols a little bit. Pujols so strong that uh, he's just able to muscle that by Luis Sardinus, the shortstop, out of the left field. That's a case where maybe we're kind of unlucky that Pujols didn't hit the ball harder. It was soft enough that uh, it took the wall a while to get to Ryan Rua out there in left field. So, brand new ball game. Angels have come back to tie it up. They still have runners at first and second with one out. And active leaders in the major leagues for RBI, Albert Pujols, one under the 1,600 RBI level. Howie Kendrick at the plate, 0 for 2, is grounded out twice against Tepish this afternoon. And he gets him to sky one to center field. Finding the sun, Leonis Martin makes the catch, tagging at second, moving to third, and now moving into second in scoring position. The throw gets away momentarily from Rubin Odor. No further advance by either Trout or Pujols. But on the fly ball to center, both Ranger uh, Angel runners able to advance 90 feet. I, I don't know whether you expect Pujols to tag up on that play or not, but there's no way you're going to throw, throw Trout out at third base. So the only place to throw this ball especially fighting the sun like he was and not really being able to get behind the ball and coming forward aggressively. You throw it to second base. Trout's going to be safe at third anyway. Now, I wouldn't have as an outfielder expected that Pujols would tag up and go to second on that one, but he did. Yep. So you have to be ready for it. No sense throwing it toward third if there's no chance to get the guy in. Well, I bar the hitter with first base open now. They're going to intentionally walk him and face David Freeze with the bases full. Well, this will be the second intentional walk of the inning. First one came to Mike Trout. And that intentional walk to Trout was followed by a Pools RBI single. And Nick Tepish hoping for a little better uh, result after this intentional walk as Ibar draws the fourth wide. He saw John Tolleson loosening in the Ranger bullpen. So the intentional pass loads him up. David Freeze coming to the plate 0 for 2. Freeze grounded the second in the second. Last time up, fly to right. That was in the fifth. Trout, Pujols, and Ibar. Third, second, and first. A 1-1 game. One ball, no strikes. Tepish continuing to work from the stretch with the bases full and two away. The right field coming on. Spolinski makes the catch. Oh, that was a rope. Coming in toward home plate. And boy, we've seen David Freeze do that before, haven't we? Yeah. So the side retired, but the Angels come back to tie it up. They get a run on two hits and leave them loaded. We'll go to the seventh inning. 
Rangers 1, Angels 1. This afternoon, the Rangers uh, a run on five hits, no errors. The Angels a run on four hits, no errors. Both teams leading, leaving the bases loaded in the sixth inning. Rangers scoring a run and then uh, leaving them full. Angels doing the same. So it's uh, a tie ball game as we head to the seventh here this afternoon. And Kevin Jepson becomes the fourth pitcher used by Mike Sosha today. Well, Jepson's got a great arm, mid-90s fastball. And he's coming around to where he's a very, very solid late inning setup guy. Nice ERA, good opponent's batting average. Good strikeout to walk ratio. And Mike Sosha, late in the season, has a lot of confidence in him. Jepson, a 30 year old, coming on here to uh, take over for Fernando Salas. Salas worked an inning, gave up the uh, go ahead run to the Rangers in the sixth on three hits. So Jepson will face J.P. Aaron Sebia to start off the Rangers seven. Aaron Sebia has struck out both times that he's come to the plate here today. Once against uh, Rasmus and once against Mike Morritt. The first pitch hits the outside corner for strike one. Jepson this year with 63 scoreless appearances in all of his outings. That's the second most in the major leagues behind Joe Smith, his teammate. Back with a little better fastball at 95 and just missed. One ball and one strike. Jepson okays the sign. The right-hander with a high set. Two and one. Aaron Sebia, 0 for 2 lifetime against Kevin Jepson. He's had a strikeout and a ground down. He's also drawn a walk. Ahead in the count here, two balls and a strike. Trying to get aboard to start this Ranger seventh inning. Two and two. And that fastball up there at 97 miles an hour. Aaron Sebia waiting as Jepson sets. The 2 2 on the way. Full count. Well, Aaron Sebia trying to. Start the seventh by getting aboard Luis Sardinas, the shortstop, 
Waits in the on-deck circle. Rangers have had their leadoff man aboard in each of the last two innings. Payoff pitch. And it's swing. Well, Aaron Sebia strikes out for the third time this afternoon. Jepson fans his first hitter. Sardine is coming up. A good fastball by Jepson. Power versus power right there. 96 miles an hour with it. Big swing here. JP just couldn't quite come up with some contact. Sardinius. A pop out to short. A ground ball to second. Switch hitter batting from the left side against the right-hander Jepson. Back that first fastball, it's nothing and one. Well, Jepson has had less success against the Rangers than anybody else. As a matter of fact, uh, he's allowed 14 runs since the first of April. Eight of them have been by the Rangers. <laughs> well, they've had his number one way or the other. Yeah. Strange stat. There's really nothing about him that you would say, well, there's the reason the Rangers yeah. have had so much success. It's just kind of one of those things. They caught him on the right night or they found some holes when he's been pitching against him. He's not the kind of guy you would look at and say, boy, there's a guy you'd want to light up. <laughs> no, nobody uh, nobody sends a limo to the airport to pick him I up. Would, and make sure I would. He gets the ballpark. 43 hits and 63 innings. 0-2 oh, to Sardinius. up there fouling off that high fastball with regularity Jepson born here locally in Anaheim 30 year old goes 6-3 and 235 pounds another 0-2 pitch is on the way and originally selected uh, in the second round of the 2002 draft. He was out of uh, Nevada High School. He was uh, raised in the Las Vegas area. Now the one-two. That uh, sharp breaking ball and just missed. Two balls, two strikes. Right-hander readies himself again. To left field, that's going to fall for a base hit. That's Ardenius. Finally well, got a pitch out over the plate a little bit that he could handle and placed it to left for a one-out single. As the uh, Rangers played the Astros the first uh, series back, uh, Wednesday night, September 24th, will be the uh, last game in that series. It's also the last Nolan Ryan beef dollar hot dog night at Globe Life Park. Don't wait. Get your tickets at TexasRangers.com, or if you prefer, you can call 972 Rangers. A one on, one out. Top of the order now, Leonis Martin to face Kevin Jepson. One ball, no strikes. Martin a single in the sixth inning. That led off the inning. He came around to score the only Ranger run thus far. Up there with the go ahead run at first and one out here in the seventh. Jepson, a check of first. Sardinius, a, a modest lead. C.J. Crone, the first baseman, uh, up a step or so in front of the bat. That 
the method of holding runners on the Angels have used for a number of years. Now Jepson ready. A bunt attempt and it's bunted foul in the air behind home plate. It will drop untouched. A ball and a strike. And the bunt base hits leaders in the American League. 15 of them now for Leonis Martin and uh, Eric Ibar, the Angel shortstop, second, but he's five back. Interesting to know what he is. 15 for what? How many sacrifice bunts he's attempt? I mean, how many bunt for base hits he's attempted? One and two. Yeah, that that would be. I I can't remember too many that he's gotten down in fair territory that he hasn't beaten out. A few. But I wouldn't think. I wouldn't think he's much better than 15 for 50. But that would just be a guess. Down on the count here, a ball and two strikes. And that probably takes care of the uh, bunting idea. Pitch high, two and two. Jepson has had to use 16 pitches already in this inning. He has one on and one out. Sardinius expanding his lead a bit at first. Fouling off that fastball. The Rangers making the last couple relievers work. Mm -hmm. Salas had almost 30 pitches in his inning. A lot of pitches so far for Jepson. This will be his 18th pitch coming up. Only the third batter he's faced. Jepson ready once again. Two balls, two strikes. There goes Sardinius. The pitch is in the dirt. It gets away. Sardinius doesn't know where it is, so he's going to try to go to third. Ionet is thrown, not nearly in time. He almost threw it in the left field. Wouldn't that have been something? Score run that way. That ball came up and hit Sardinius. Sardinius almost didn't get there in time. It looked like he thought he was going to get there easily. And then he had to turn it on and slide. Sardinius going on the pitch, so that should be a stolen base. And then a wild pitch, and that's exactly what it uh, is going to be ruled now. Yeah. So the stolen base, a wild pitch. Rangers have the go-ahead run at third. The infield all the way in with a full count on Martin. And he pops up the next pitch. Freeze and Ibar as David Freeze, the third baseman, to make the catch. That is out number two, and what a huge out. Well, Jepson challenged him with his fastball. He pounded that mid-90s fastball, a little bit in on the fists, and he accomplished what he wanted to accomplish, a little weak, weakly hit pop-up. Ran right in there, mm -hmm. good pitch. Upper part of the strike zone, right on the inside corner. Now Ionet out to uh, have a talk. With Kevin Jepson. But one thing, if you're uh, you Sardinius down there at third, you need to keep an eye for a possible uh, wild pitch. And we have already seen one from Jepson. Jepson with four or five wild pitches now. It was uh, 64 innings of work. So he can let one get away every once in a while. Here's Rosales, who's one for three. That one almost got away. and chased Adam back off the plate. One ball, no strikes. Rosales is single last inning. He's got the go-ahead run at third and Luis Sardinius. And a check swing foul. Boy, that, oh, what part of the bat that hit? Might have hit between his hands. It almost hit him. <laughs> it did. Oh, just ball hit the end. back, kind of tilted toward the right, and hit the end of the bat. 
So one and one now after that check swing foul. Jepson, a check of third to the plate he comes. And this is high and away. Two balls and a strike. Jepson's next pitch. Gonzalez had a pretty healthy cut at that fastball. And the count now even at two and two. Luis Sardinius at third. He had a one-out single. Advanced to third on the stolen base and wild pitch on the same play. Martin popped out. And now Rosales trying to pick him up with two outs. Able to lay off the breaking ball. It's a full count. Tough one to lay off. I've seen all fastballs, and all of a sudden you get a breaking ball like that. He didn't even come close to trying to swing at it. Adam Rosales hitting second in the order. He'll be followed by Rugnet Odor. Odor would love to have a shot at Jepson in this inning. Payoff pitch. And he's winning. Jepson with 95 away, and Rosales couldn't catch up with it. Rangers get a one-out hit and leave a runner at third base. Stretch time in Anaheim. 1-1 the score. And now, please enjoy the... Uh, Introduction of God Bless America. Prior to singing Take Me Out to the Ball Game, please join Bailey Gambertolio in singing God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her. Through the night with the light from above Through the mountains, to the prairies, to the oceans White with foam God bless America, my home sweet home God bless America, my home sweet home Rangers remaining a schedule, not just upcoming. This is all there is. Seven more games after today, and uh, Houston starts it off with three Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Barry Collin getting the start tomorrow night, 7 o'clock on Fox Sports Southwest. Oakland comes in for the final four games next weekend. 
a 1-1 ball game here this afternoon and uh, C.J. Crone starting on things off bottom third of the Angels order Crone against Tepish today has lined out and popped out he finds himself down on the count nothing and two and Nix is kind of extending the nice streak he's on right now we've mentioned earlier in the game three earned runs or less in eight of his last nine starts Hasn't had a lot of run support, which is why Pecky's had the worst run support in the league, which is why his record is not better. Last start was a win at Oakland, one earned run in six innings. And against the Angels, this is the fifth time he's pitched against the Angels, and if it continues like it's going, it'll be the fifth straight time that he's had a game with three earned runs or less. Uh, Nick down nearing that uh, 90 pitch plateau, 88 of them so far. And 53 strikes, 35 balls. A 1 2 count to CJ Crone. Check swing, the appeal at first, and Jim Wolf said no swing, 2 and 2. Rangers are run on six hits this afternoon. The Angels are run on four hits. Depish. Uh, has had two intentional walks. And he gets a ground ball out to short that Sardinius handles. One gone. Well, before Efren Navarro steps in, let's take time for a Mazda game break. Here's Dana Larson. All right, Dana, thank you. Well, that's a big loss for uh, Seattle. Grimp in their style. And the wild card in the American League, Oakland and Kansas City. Now in a dead heat for the two spots. Seattle a game and a half back after their loss today. Wish I could tell you things are being clarified, but uh, I think they're being muddied as much as anything else what's going on lately. Efren Navarro twice has grounded out against Nick Tepish, and he finds himself down in the count at no balls and two strikes. Tepish trying to get his sixth win of the year here this afternoon. Full foul by Navarro, and the count stays at no balls and two strikes. Nick, you'll remember, was uh, optioned to Triple A about midway through the spring run this year. Up the middle, nice stop by Odor, a full 360, and he fires to Rosales for the out. Well, that was a tough play too. That was a line, line shot, one hop smash. He just went over and picked it like it was nothing to it, like it was a routine little hop. Terrific play. Definitely not as easy as he made it look. An outstanding defense again by Odor. Now two gone. And Chris Ionetta comes up for his third time to the plate. Breaking ball hangs inside to him. One ball, no strikes. Ionetta. Singled and scored the only Angel run last inning. Led off with the base hit. Brought home by Albert Pujols. 2 0 oh now. Deppies reading the signs from Tailey's. This is low and away. It's three balls and no strikes. So Nick in danger of uh, his first unintentional walk. Ionetta with two outs trying to get aboard to extend this inning. Cole Calhoun, the leadoff man, waits to be next. Green light on 3-0 and oh and a fly ball to center. Again, battling the sun. Leonis Martin has to reach up at the last minute. 
and he hauls that in. So the Angels are gone in one, two, three fashion. We finish seventh in Anaheim. Rangers one, Angels one. the top of the eighth let's take a look at our fan photo selection of the afternoon and comes from Charlene Charlene thank you very much a great picture and thanks to the good folks at AT&T for making this interaction possible if you would like to tweet your photo it's a hashtag Southwest fan photo and we will uh, select one for each game that is on Fox Sports Southwest now we head to the eighth inning a 1-1 ball game Rubenet Odor to start things off, and Joe Smith has uh, come in to be the latest angel out of the bullpen today. Yep, the excellent setup man for the Angels, Joe Smith, 74th ball game. A lot of decisions. He's won seven games in that setup relief role. 175 opponents' batting average to go along with it. 67 strikeouts and 70. Almost 72 innings and only 13 walks. So he is a strike throwing machine. Rugnet Odor 0 for 2. A couple of ground outs and a sacrifice bunt. 0 and 1. Smith back to him. Gets the inside corner. No balls, two strikes. Now Odor 0 for 4 against Joe Smith. Trying to get aboard to start the Ranger eighth inning. And a chopper out to second. The new second baseman, Gordon Beckham, handles that. We're out number one. Beckham on to uh, replace Howie Kendrick in the Angel Order. One away, and Adrian Beltre now will step to the plate. Beltre intentionally walked his last time. That was in the sixth inning, the inning the Rangers got on the scoreboard. One ball, no strikes. Other than that, Beltre is... Uh, Tapped out to the mound and applied to very deep center field. One and one. I would think Smith is a pretty tough guy to elevate the ball against. That good sinking fastball and likes to throw down in the strike zone. Hard hit ground ball down to third. Freeze has it. Corner to corner, Beltre is retired, two gone. Next will be Jake Smolinski. Smolinski a double in three trips. He 
that double leading off the uh, Ranger fifth inning, and he was left stranded there. A walk put two runners aboard with nobody out, and that was when Mike Morin came in and did a, a great Houdini act to get out of that jam. Oh, and one on the foul ball. But Jake, a 361 average as he faces Joe Smith. Back in the box, no balls and a strike. Now nothing in two. Yeah, Smith gets pretty good velocity from down there too. He can run it up there to 90 miles an hour. Generally, sidearm guys like that are more 84 to 88-ish. He's got a little bit of velocity and he's got that excellent movement on it too. Right-hander readies himself the 0-2 pitch. Hung one up there for Smolinski, and Jake fouled it straight back. Well, that's the pitch you want to capitalize on against Joe Smith, that breaking ball that stays up. Smolinski waiting as Smith. Comes back to him. Got him swinging. Breaking ball down and away. Smith has a 1 2 3 inning. Rangers gone, and after seven and a half, it remains the Rangers one and the Angels one. Kirkman now has come on to take over all well, the Rangers going to the bottom of the eighth inning. Oh, good good opportunity for Michael Kirkman to face a tough part of the lineup. We'll see how long he stays in there. The first hitter is Cole Calhoun, a left-hand hitter, but then you've got Trout and Pujols after that. Looks like there's someone else warming up in the bullpen, so possibly this is a one-at-bat one bat appearance for Michael. We'll see. Michael certainly, uh, yeah, maybe not reinventing himself, but uh, redefining his role. He's become a, a left-handed specialist. He 
Hawkins been able to get that breaking ball down and away consistently to left-handed hitters, and that uh, has been a key for him. He will face a tough left-handed batter in Cole Calhoun. Calhoun 0 for 3 today. He struck out twice and grounded out. Nick Tepish, seven very effective innings again. Just four hits and one run. And a fastball in to Calhoun for strike one. Tepish allowed uh, two walks. They were both intentional. They both came in the sixth inning. He had three strikeouts. Kirkman back to the plate. Calhoun fouled off that uh, breaking ball and stayed up a bit. Nothing at two. Michael Kirkman, the left-hander from Lake City, Florida. Sets for the 0-2 pitch. There's that good slider down and away. Couldn't get Calhoun, Calhoun to offer at it. And it's one and two. Calhoun waiting as Kirkman okays the sign. Down the left field line, but it's slicing foul. Nice try by Calhoun right there. He's just trying to hang in there and make some contact. Almost got himself a double. He's had 29 doubles to go along with his 16 home runs this year as a leadoff hitter. He scored 87 runs. Still one and two as Calhoun gets back into the batter's box. Check swing. Did he go around? Yes, he did. He appealed down to David Rackley at third, and Kirkman gets the strikeout of the only man he's going to face because Tim Bogar out signaling to the bullpen. So a nice job by Michael Kirkman to get the strikeout of Cole Calhoun. He will leave after that one hitter. It looks like Sean Tollison will be the new Ranger pitcher. So Tollison coming in from the left field bullpen. We'll take another timeout. A 1-1 ball game here in Anaheim. We're back after this on Fox Sports Southwest. out of the bullpen. We'll uh, pitch here in the eighth inning with the bases empty and one out. Sean's numbers on the season. 62nd game for Sean. Great opponent's batting average of 212. And a great time to come in and do the job. Trout and Pujols will be the first two hitters that Sean will face in the tie ball game.
So Mike Trout stepping to home plate. He has been aboard all three times here this afternoon. He was hit by a pitch in the first inning, singled the lead off the fourth, and then had the intentional walk in the sixth. And Trout, a 291 average, one for four against Sean Tollison. And Tollison pours in a fastball for strike one. Ranger outfield playing in the no doubles alignment. And they are back near the warning track at every position. One and one is that breaking ball. Dives into the dirt. Got, of course, the uh, home run last night to dead center field up in the batter's eye. Also had a triple in last night's ball game. John Tollison trying to nullify him here in the eighth. Dawson nods in agreement and sets the 1 1 pitch. 2 and 1. Dawson's velocity is improving as the year goes on, too. That was like 95 the last one. Had that uh, good changeup working for him. The gut fastball. Out of play to the right. 2 and 2. Mike Trout back to the plate. John Tollison trying to figure out how to get him out here in the eighth inning. Got him on the fist. That's a pretty good spot if you can go somewhere with him in fastball. Trout able to hang tough. Trout with that rare combination of blazing speed and awesome power. Another 2-2 pitch is coming his way. Tomas Tales, Ranger catcher, framing that pitch right there near the outside corner. Well, it's one of those balls that... Let's say we've seen it called before. We've seen it not called before. Dollison's payoff pitch to Trout. Low ball four. And Trout, with the go-ahead run, is at first base and one out for Albert Pujols. We well, see Trout steal a base today. And this is a prime time to steal a base, you would have to think, if he gets a jump. Mike Maddox out to uh, have a chat with uh, Sean Tolson. The only reason you might not steal a base is because Pujols is the hitter. Right. And if you do steal a base, they might walk him. Well, I guess that's a decent reason not to steal a base. And you don't have Howie Kendrick in the game anymore no. hitting after Pujols. So no, you don't. That would be even more incentive to uh, not mess with Albert. I think if you had Howie Kendrick in the lineup, you wouldn't mind Kendrick hitting with a couple of men yeah. out. Yeah, but Gordon Beckham instead of Howie Kendrick is a little bit different. Well, here's Pujols, who has uh, hit the ball sharply a couple of times today. One for two. Make that one for three with an RBI. One for five in his career against Sean Tollison. A trout at first, one out. A 1-1 ball game here in the eighth. Ball one is low and outside, and Trout... No inclination on that pitch to try and get a jump. Albert Pujols grounds into four double plays at least this year in the American League than anybody. Five more than the second place hitter, Matt Dominguez. Trout a pretty good lead this time. And a ground ball. Beltre bobbles, recovers, throws, and not in time. And Bogar going out there, and during the play, while 
Adam Rosales was arguing. Trout took off for third. And the challenge immediately issued. Jim Wolf, the first base umpire, will be joined by uh, Brian Gorman. With a tremendous recovery by Beltre and a difficult ball to flag down in the first place. It was a chopper, got his glove on it, recovered, and threw accurately off balance. We'll see how the call goes on the appeal. But a terrific recovery by Adrian, and we'll find out if he got him or not. Well, it's going to be interesting because uh, with the appeal, also the placement of the runner would be... Uh, Look, it looked like on that replay, the ball beat him there, but that's just at first blush. Adam Rosales thought so. He was uh, a little disgusted with the call from Jim Wolf. But the tandem of uh, Brian Gorman and Jim Wolf, the uh, two umpires involved on headsets now, hooked up with the uh, replay command center in New York. Ball on the field, safe at first, and that's important uh, if there's not clear and convincing evidence to overturn it, that call would stand. And we'll see what happens. And, uh, boy, that is bang, bang. Yeah, I don't know. And, and that's where that call on the field comes into play. And you get the other line. That ball is in the glove now. I think, I think it got there. Boy, that camera work was just tremendous. And out at first is the call. When you see it in yep. slow motion, boy, that, that was just absolutely tremendous. Well, that super slow-mo, it uh, showing him clear and convincing evidence to overturn the call, and that is huge. Pujols out. Trout will stay at third since he went during the play. Well, a very big challenge and a call overturned for the Rangers. So there are two outs now with Trout at third and Gordon Beckham, who took over defensively for Howie Kendrick last inning, is at the plate. Takes low for ball one. Beckham a 223 average, eight home runs, 43 RBI. Beckham, of course, the former Chicago White Sox. Wired on the 21st of August from Chicago. Outside, two and nothing. Beckham one for three in this series. Had a base hit last night. The go-ahead run 90 feet away with two outs here in the eighth inning in a 1-1 ball game. Beckham, a fly ball to right center, playable. Smolinski moves to the alley and makes the catch. And Tollison, with the help of a challenge reversal call, able to weather the walk. One left, we're going to the ninth inning. It's the Rangers one and the Angels one.
one run apiece between the Angels and the Rangers as we close out this three-game series here at the Big A in Anaheim. After this, it is off to Arlington to close out the 2014 regular season. It will be a six-game homestand beginning with the Houston Astros and the little fireball, Jose Altuve, Derek Holland going to mound for the Rangers tomorrow. This information brought to you by AT&T U-verse. And fellas wanted to pass along a little nugget for you in talking to Tim Bogart today. He said because the Astros are not in contention, he'll be able to play around with some things a little bit more as far as the lineup is concerned. He said he wants to get Wilder Rodriguez and Leona Smart. I mean, I'm sorry. Rubnet Odor and Luis Sardinas all in the infield starting a game at the same time. He said Gil's dad is coming in. He wants to get him a start, and he wants those three to be able to play together in the infield because Gil has been such um, a mentor to them throughout their minor league careers and in spring training and different things like that. So he'd like to get that done at some point during that Astros series. So keep an eye out for that. That'll be great. Yep. Thanks, Emmett. Good stuff. That uh, that would be fun. It's, it's good that you have those three games against Houston, uh, like Emily said, where you know, you're not playing against a contending team, and uh, you can do whatever you want with the lineup. Yeah, the way the race is going, it looks like those last four could all be meaningful with yep. Oakland coming in. Sure could. Oakland's tied 6-6 six to six right now, but Kansas City won. Seattle lost, so Seattle's missing out on some opportunities. Houston's beating them two days in a row. And speaking of Houston, Houston Street is on the hill here in the top of the ninth inning. The Angels closer facing Tomas Dalys, Ryan Rua, and J.P. Aaron Sebia. Saw Houston Street last night. The 31-year-old right-hander closed out the uh, Angels' 8-5 victory with his save. Dalys, a perfect afternoon. Two hits and a walk. Drove in the only Ranger run to this point with a sixth inning single. That's out of play, and the count moves to a ball and two strikes. But Daly's now a 267 average. Last night when Street came into the ball game, Daly's was the first hitter he faced, and Daly's flied to center. Street to the wind. And misses low and in, two and two. Houston Street, the pickup from the Padres. He was really the last piece that the uh, Angels felt they needed in that bullpen, the solid closer. He gets a strikeout up to Lee here to start the night. Well, Street has, we keep talking about deception in a guy's delivery. This guy's got a lot of deception. Takes that very unorthodox step back toward first base that you don't see guys do much anymore. And so he's got the deception in his delivery. And he's not, not a hard thrower, but he's got a lot of movement on his fastball. And good off-speed pitches to go along with it. And the other thing that, we also talk about a lot of a lot of buzz with a closer. He's got the heart of a closer. Mm -hmm. Like Eddie Gordado. He goes out there. Eddie used to go out there with an 88 mile an hour fastball and stand on the mound like he was throwing 100. <laughs> Street's that same kind of guy. He's yep. got the football mentality. Of course, his dad was a great football player. Great pitcher, too, at the University of Texas. And Houston was a football player in high school as well. A one and one the count to Ryan Rua. Rua 0 for 3 this afternoon. Last night, Rua against Street and a ground ball to short. Pretty good assortment of breaking balls and off speed pitches and an occasional fastball from Street. 1 and 2 to Rua. Just real hard for one at bat in a ball game to get on a guy like Street to figure out exactly what he's going to do. Yeah, even the guys that have seen him for a long time, you're right, you don't face him that much. And if you've never seen him before and you're a rookie, you really got a tough assignment. Somehow, Ryan was able to follow that one off.
Rowe back in. Street rubbing up that new baseball. Hops back on top of the pitching rubber and will stare in for the sign from Chris Ionetta. Ball is blasted to deep left field. Going back is Navarro. Goodbye. First major league home run for Ryan Rua. And the Rangers lead it 2-1 to one in the ninth inning. <laughs> well, somehow he fouled off that pitch. It was about a foot outside before that. He just ticked it to stay alive. And he made his first big league home run a big one. That ball went a long way. There's no doubt about that one. Way out in left field in a critical part of the ball. And what a thrill to have your first big league home run come in the ninth inning against a very good closer. <laughs> That's just great. You Let's see what he hit. You couldn't script it any better. No, you couldn't. No, he didn't get that in quite as far as he wanted. It's in the inside part of the strike zone, but he wanted to run it in on his fist. And never got it there. Boy, did Ryan tee off on that one. Well, he had come close a couple of times for his first home run, first major league home run. He was going to leave no doubt with that one. No. Nope. That was back in the upper part of the bullpens out there, in the Angels section of the bullpen. Well, Ryan Rua now with uh, a lot in common with Jake Smolinski. They can talk a little bit about their first major league home run. Smolinski had his first up in Oakland earlier this week. No, a 2-1 to one Ranger lead. And J.P. Aaron Sebia taking the pitch low. It's now 1-2. and two. Aaron Sebia, the hat trick as far as strikeouts this afternoon. All three times that he has been to the plate. Street to the wine. And Aaron Sebia laces one to right field. That's down for a base hit. A pretty nifty job at swinging the bat by Aaron Sebia going the other way. Yeah, that's generally not the kind of swing you'll see J.P. take. He's more of a pull hitter. But he waited on that pitch nicely, went down and drove it solidly over second base into right field for a base hit. Great job of hitting by J.P. And a pitch runner now for Aaron Sebius. Wheel there, Rodriguez. Rodriguez uh, on as the pinch runner. One on, one out. A run across for the Rangers to take the lead here in the ninth. And Luis Sardinius will step to the plate. Sardinius, one for three, is single. Went to left field his last time up. That was off Kevin Jepson. Slap fair down the third baseline. Around second is Rodriguez. He will motor into third ahead of the throw and into second with a slide. Luis Sardinius. And the Rangers have runners at second and third with just one out. Great job by Sardinius. Slap that ball right by the third baseman down the line. He's got a couple of hits in the ball game. Well, second and third with uh, Leonis Martin at the plate. He's going to draw an intentional walk to load the bases. And Adam Rosales swinging a bat in the on-deck circle. Going to come up here with the, the bases juiced. Pretty nice job of swinging the bat by Sardinius. Yep. That's the third wide one. One more, and uh, Leonis will head on down to first. Martin, one for four for the single to run scored today. And this will be the second time that he has been on base. And Mike Soship. He has seen enough from his closer, Houston Street. I think he just doesn't want him to throw any yep. more pitches, Buzz. He's got 19 right now, and he's not going to push it. Associate out to the mound. Probably the first time he's had to do that with Houston Street. But Take the ball from him in the ninth inning, and that is going to do it. Well, Yoslan Herrera will come on, and uh, he will inherit a bases loaded, one out situation. Rangers have taken the lead with Ryan Rua's first Major League home run. We'll take a timeout. We're back after this. 
for a run and uh, they are threatening for more as Yoslan Herrera comes out of the bullpen to take over with the bases loaded. Well, Houston Street threw 19 pitches and he was gone after only one third of an inning. And the Rangers trying to pick up a little bit more here. Herrera's record on the season will be his 18th ball game. A little bit of a high Opponent's batting average, 333. Now the right-hander on to face Adam Rosales with the bases full. Rosales one for four, a single back in the sixth inning. Now Rodriguez, the pinch runner down at third. Sardinas at second, Leonis Martin at first, and Adam Rosales. To say that was a defensive swing might be an understatement. I think he was a little bit over-anxious to swing at that pitch in the first place. Almost guessing it would be a strike. Instead, it almost hit him in the waist. That's what he was defending against. I, th I think the only way you can swing at that pitch is if you've made up your mind, I'm swinging at the first pitch, period. Otherwise, you'd be trying to get out of the way of it. <laughs> oh, and one to Adam. Rangers, uh, that runner in scoring position average going up bit by bit of late. 247 for the year. 0-1 pitch, knee-high strike at 95, 0-2. Nyanetta out to talk to Herrera very briefly. That was either not the location that uh, Ionetta wanted or crossed him up somehow. Herrera, Cuban native, 6'2", about 200 pounds, 23-year-old. Peering in for the sign from Ionetta. The right-hander is ready. Still 0-2. Signed this past offseason with the Angels, did uh, Herrera as a minor league free agent. Base is full of Rangers. A run across here to allow the Rangers to take the lead in the ninth inning. Ryan Rua, his first major league home run, got that job done. Gonzalez fouling that fastball back. Still nothing in two. Adam Rosales trying to increase his RBI total. It currently is at 19. You see the uh, 
Rangers positioned at every sack. Herrera nods in agreement. One and two. Go back to 2008, Herrera made his major league debut with the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates. He was out of baseball for a couple of years, 2011 and 2012 before coming back and pitching in 2013. Out of play again. Rosales having a good at bat against Herrera. Well, he fell behind 0-2, put himself in a hole, but he's battling. He's actually had a couple of pitches to hit and had some great swings at him. He just fouled him straight back, so he's hanging in there. He knows what his job is right here. Rangers establishing their leads at all three bases. One ball, two strikes as Herrera gets ready. And again, out of play. Gonzalez out to uh, have a chat with himself. See if he can get his mind right for. Uh, the next pitch that he's about to face. Luis Sardinius out there at second. He is uh, trailing Wheeldare Rodriguez, who is at third. And over at first, Leonis Martin. Herrera says, okay. Now the right hander is ready to go. Two and two. That's the one he swung at on the first pitch. Yeah. <laughs> Long at bat. Yeah, there it is. Right the, same spot. The exact same pitch. <laughs> That's pretty hard to do. Throw a pitch on the exact same spot that far inside twice and one at bat. I guess he figured he swung at it once. Maybe he tried it again. Right. Now the 2-2 is coming. Off the fist, out to second. Beckham, Ibar, back to first double play. Jonas Martin did all he could to break that up, and nothing doing. Rangers, though, take the lead on Ryan Ruas, first major league home run. They leave two aboard. Bottom of the ninth coming up. Neftali Feliz trying to close out a 2-1 Ranger lead.
lead thanks to the man in your picture. That would be Ryan Rua and our Jimmy John's freaky fast delivery of the afternoon. Indeed, Ryan Rua's first major league home run, and it came off Houston Street. Freaky fast into the upper bullpen in left field for Ryan Rua. We mentioned he had come close a couple of times, and there's no doubt about that one. That a good 420 feet from home plate. And Neftali Feliz now on to see if he can't garner the save here against the Angels. Well, he's done a good job of doing just that. 10 out of 11. Opponents hitting below 200 against him. And it's a little tougher save than it might have been. Bases loaded and one out. I don't think you'll ever see a shortstop turn a double play. Better than Ibar turned that double play. Yeah. He came across the bag as fast as you could and threw it as hard as he could to turn that double play. That, that was a beautiful double play. But it kept the Rangers at a two to one lead and makes it a little tougher for Neffy right here. Now, Feliz, if you go back throughout his career, and granted, a lot of this was before the arm problems, but he has saved all 15 games he's had an opportunity to against these Angels. He's perfect 15 for 15. Here's Ibar to start things off. Show his bunt, take strike one. Ibar, one for two, a single in the fifth inning. Also intentional walk in the sixth. Against Feliz, not much luck, one for 12. Neffy back to the plate. That one registering. 95 on the radar gun from police. So he has brought his good fastball with him today. First three scheduled hitters here in the ninth. I bar freeze and crone. Police trying to lock it down and make a winner out of Sean Tollison, who is the pitcher of record for the Rangers. The 0-2. Got him swinging. Boy, that's, uh, that's the old nephew right there. 95 miles an hour dive bombing away from the left-hand hitter. Beautiful pitch. There's some kind of movement on that pitch. <laughs> Good luck trying to hit that. That pitch is 95 miles an hour to go along with it. So one gone, David Freeze will come up and I think if Neftali Feliz had the uh, option, he'd wait about 20 minutes for that shadow that's at home plate right now to creep out even further toward the mound. Get about halfway out there. Yeah, make it even tougher. Yeah. Can't even see the catcher on our monitor. And as long as Feliz can see him, we're okay. <laughs> as long as he can see Feliz. <laughs> David Freeze, 0 for 3 this afternoon. He has flied out a couple of times and grounded out. Fouls that pitch off to the right, and Feliz now inching up on the uh, speedometer. He's up to 97. And ahead of the count, no balls, two strikes. Daly's throwing the signs out, and Feliz ready to go. That's as hard as he could throw one yep. right there. I think we've more than maybe one other or two other times seen Feliz get it at the 97 like that. Well, he hasn't thrown one less than 95 today. Yep. Got him swinging a good sharp slider. Boy, those two strikeout pitches were impossible to hit. Sinking fastball at 97 miles an hour. Slider after he'd just seen a 97 mile an hour fastball down and away, breaking sharply. This is by far two thirds of the way through the inning, anyway. The best outing he's had. Yep. He can finish it off right here and get CJ Crone. That'll be his best save of the year. But still got tough out to go. Crone, a pop out, a ground out, and a fly out. And Feliz starts him off with a breaking ball for strike one. Throwing eight pitches, seven strikes. 
The only ball was the one he threw like Jeff Smarja through those five pitches when he just let it go as hard as he could. Thrown 0 for 1 against Feliz in the previous matchups. There is strike two. Now Feliz bringing his best out here today against the Angels. He has struck out both Ibar and Freeze. He has C.J. Crone down on the count 0-2 with the pitch on the way. One ball, two strikes. Please on top of the hill, reading the sign. He is ready to work. The one-two pitch. Foul back. We'll try it again. And it's not just a case of him popping one at 97. He hasn't thrown one less than 95. He's thrown three or four at 97. Well, this is the best his arm has felt so far this year. Yep. There's been a couple of other nice outings, but nothing like this. Got him swinging. Wow. Sharp hook, Neftali Feliz. Welcome back, the old Nefty. A three strikeout inning in a row, and the Angels are shut down with an exclamation point as the Rangers make a winner out of Sean Tollison this afternoon. Feliz with a domineering save to cap off a 2 1 Ranger lead. Or Ranger win, I should say. Not just the lead, he shut the Angels down with no doubt left. Now Ryan Rua with his first major league home run and the best save we have seen this year from Neftali Feliz. He threw almost every slider in the exact same perfect spot. Down, away, slightly out of the strike zone. The hitter had no chance to hit him. And he mixed it in with his best fastball with good command. And that really was Neffy at his best. And what a great game. He beat, beat the Angels who 